Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here, and welcome back to Best of the Month, where a few of us are gonna tell you about some new discoveries that we're really enjoying and what we like about them so much. So I'm gonna go ahead and kick it off. It was actually a great month. I had several picks here, and I'm gonna go with uh, a small deduction card game, cooperative card game, that is. This is called the Shipwreck Arcana. And it's a really neat concept of drawing a couple of tiles from a bag, putting one uh, in front of you hidden, and playing the other one out to a spot on the uh, on the display. There's a few cards face up. And they have differing rules, like, okay, if you've got two tiles, they're both odd, play the larger one here. The numbers go one through seven, so upon you doing that, then the other players, you can't speak, the other players would try to deduce what it is you are holding back. And you do this a multiple, you know, a, a few times in the game, multiple times, while trying to keep this clock in the game from running out on you. You know, to do enough things, you win the whole the whole campaign. It's really interesting. I really enjoyed it. Small game, compact box, lots of fun, and a very interesting twist on both a deduction game and a cooperative game. So that's my pick of the month. That is the Shipwreck Arcana. My best of the month is. Well, it was a tough choice. There's a lot of great games that came out this month, but I'm going to go with Hail Hydra. That's right, a little social deduction game. And I'm kind of the person when we get social deduction games, I'm like, another one. You say, but Tom, it's Marvel. You're right. The Marvel theme certainly helps, and it doesn't hurt that the game looks gorgeous. But it is a streamlined version of Battlestar Galactica, essentially. It's like Battlestar Galactica in 30 minutes. I love it. It's fast. It's furious. Lots of yelling. Simple, easy, just a great solution social deduction game and my social deduction game of choice right now. Fantastic game, Hail Hydra. Hey folks, welcome back to another best of the month. As always, I am going to cheat a little bit and show you two games that were my best of the month. These both got really high ratings for me this this uh, this month. Uh, first one is this one right here, Blitz Bowl. This is a uh, condensed version of Blood Bowl and that I really enjoyed Blood Bowl. I think I rated Blood Bowl at eight. This one is a nine because I really enjoy how streamlined, efficient, and uh, just it really still packs that punch that you're looking for for Blood Bowl. So that's my first best of the month, Blitz Bowl. Then I also have this one. This is one of my most anticipated games from Gen Con, and it did not disappoint. Really enjoyed this one. This is a great uh, social deduction party game. So, But I also gave this one a nine out of ten as well because it is that cool and that good. I love all the different uh, modules that come in this one, so it had to make uh, my best of the month, just like uh, Blitz Bowl had to make my best of the month. So, take it! Hey friends, Chubby Meeple, and for my best of the month for uh, the month of August, I'm going with Everdell from Starling Games, designer James A. Wilson. It's a great um, worker placement, a little bit of an engine building, resource management. There's some hand management that goes on. There's a lot of different things I love about this game. Obviously, production is fantastic. You've got a, a tree uh, that stands up off the board that's you know really a superficial piece that you don't really need for gameplay, but it really makes the game pop on the table. You've got metal score tokens. You've got uh, little latex, rubbery, silicone berries, wood, twigs. There's uh, different pieces of plastic and resin for other pieces that, that you have in the game. The card art is phenomenal. It's gorgeous. It's just a beautiful, vibrant world. I highly recommend this game for gamers of uh, all ages, really. It's very simple to play. It plays well solo. That is Everdell from Starling Games, my pick for best of the month for August. And until next time, keep gaming, friends. I'm Jason Peacock. The best game I played this month, hands down, A Song of Ice and Fire. Technically a miniatures war game, but it's so streamlined and accessible. Some of the best gaming experiences I've had this year. Check out my review right here on the Dice Tower. See you next month, I'm Jason Peacock. Hi everyone, so trying not to sound incredibly boring more than I normally do, I'm gonna say my best game of the month is Container. So this is the, the 10th Jumbo Anniversary Edition. Effectively, it's the super indulgence. It's ridiculously expensive. It's like a hundred pounds. And you know what? What's in the box doesn't really make it feel like a hundred pound game. You know, you, you buy a huge zombie side or Dark Souls, which are less money, you get a lot of stuff in that box. Whereas in this, all the money is going on those big boats and the cool containers and the rest is kind of just, ooh, uh, we've got to have this, let's make that bit on the cheap. Which is a bad start, but 
The gameplay itself is really tight. You are effectively making certain colours of containers, buying others, sort of selling them on again onto container ships. There's going to be an auction where you can bid for the different containers and that's how you score points. But there's twists on scoring and the whole way through everything seems important. Be it your turn, what you're doing, what other people are doing, what they're making, what they're buying, what they're auctioning. The whole game you feel like you're invested in. Invested in the very, very minute economy that is container. Slightly cheekily, also I have to say, expansion-wise, Downforce Danger Circuit, which doesn't even have its own box, was wonderful. Um, any excuse to get that game back to the table is a plus point for me. And Danger Circuit's circuits, their tracks, are kind of cool. They're, one's got a loop, one's got some dangerous areas where you can only overtake. Uh, so there's slight variation, and they still feel the same tempo, like the same length. You're still just running out of cards near the end of the race. Will you finish? Will you not finish uh, the race? It's still got the same vibe, so more of the same for a great game. So that was Danger Circuit Expansion for Downforce and Container, my best game and expansion of the month. Hey everybody, even Steven here. My best game of the month is Welcome to. A nice roll and write where you have to fill in numbers on a housing grid. It's super addictive. Check it out. This is not hard at all. Uh, some games feel so good to play, and this is one of those games that feels great to play. You're talking about Engine Builder, the engine building game, or Gizmos, okay? Um, Phil Walker Harding, I'm all in on your stuff. Fantastic game, feels so good, August felt good. This is the game of the month for August for me. Hello, and my game for the month of August is Nectophobia, designed by Catherine Stiepel and published by Pandasaurus Games. I acquired this late in the month, but it quickly rose to my number one spot just because of the unique gameplay. You're wearing dark sunglasses which completely blind you so you can't see the board. So you have to rely on just touching the board as you're maneuvering your way through a forest to try to rescue your friend, all by being chased by a vampire. Believe me, it's a lot more challenging than what it sounds like. Well, my pick for the month of August is Nectophobia. Check it out. Hey, everybody. My name is The Brant. And I'm Kathy. And we are from the Portal Gaming Podcast, part of the Dice Tower Network. And we want to tell you about the best game we played in the month of August. And that game is Rise of Queensdale. Um, we love this game. It was published by Aaliyah and Ravensburger. And it was designed by Inca and Marcus Brand. Yeah, um, Rise of Queensdale is a two to four player Euro competitive strategic <laughs> legacy style game, and we've had a lot of fun with it. Yeah, yeah, it has a really good story, um, and there's a lot that changes in between plays. Um, it doesn't get crazy that it changes mechanisms or anything, but um, there's definitely a lot added to it each time, which is fun. Yeah, and it kind of starts out as a light, medium-ish game, and I thought it would work its way up towards heavy as we were playing more and more. It adds a lot of stuff, but it it doesn't really get overcomplicated. So it kind of finishes out at, well, where we are so far, as a medium-weight uh, game. But we've had a lot of fun with it. We've had no issues playing it two-player. Yeah, it's been great two-player. Uh, in fact, that's been enjoyable because we've been able to just knock out games of it. So, yeah, it's been really awesome. So if you get a chance, check out... Rise of Queensdale from Aaliyah and Ravensburger. And if you want to hear from more from us, you can check out episode 100 of the Portal Gaming Podcast, which is part of the Dice Tower Network. Thanks, everybody. My game of the month is Lords of Hellas. I mean, this game is just a great dudes on the map style game. Um, I like that there's four different ways to win the game, so you can... Do your normal, just conquer, go moving to from area to area. But you also have other things to do, like you, your hero can go out and quest and fight monsters. Uh, and if you defeat three monsters, you win that way. You also have those beautiful giant miniatures where there's actually monuments where you're going to build them during the game. And once you get them built up to the fifth level, then whoever holds that uh, particular region where that... A monument is uh, by the third round after that monuments get finished uh, wins the game as well. So 
really really great game i mean the game it's beautiful uh, it's well done well produced uh and it's a lot of fun to play i mean there's a lot of player interaction i like the way you actually the battles are done with cards rather than the dice i'm getting more and more found of that kind of things i really love this game lords of Hellas. if you haven't played it you gotta try it Howdy folks, Rebecca and Hunter here from Family Showdown, and our board game pick of the month is unanimous. Dinosaur Island. Dinosaur Island is a worker placement game. Our favorite mechanism, you're drafting dice. That's DNA. You use that DNA to create dinosaurs. You're putting them in a park. You're inviting the public to come see your dinosaurs. You're hoping the dinosaurs don't escape and eat the public. Great game. A lot of fun. I love the theme to this game. It's like the novel Jurassic Park and I love that you're taking the DNA and you're extracting it and you're creating dinosaurs and cloning them and setting them into this park and building up your park and trying to invite people in trying to also keep out the hooligans hooligans no gun comes of that yes so if any of that sounds like fun you need to try out Dinosaur Island our pick of the month and that's going to do it for us for this month, everybody. A big thanks to all my contributors, of course, and a big thanks to you for tuning in and checking this out. Hope you discovered at least one new game that sounds great to you. I'm Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.